Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be ready to continue. Let's make our next witness. Thank you, Judge. The next witness is going to be Megan Megan Bonfert, B-O-N-F-E-R-T. And uh, Megan, if you don't mind, tell this jury how old you are. 25. And where are you from? California originally. Okay. And how long have you been in Orange County? Six years. And uh, are you married with kids? No. And where are you currently living? Conway. Okay. And where do you work? At Lincoln Park. Have you ever worked in Tilted Hill? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And where is Tilted Hill located? Broadway at the beach. Okay. And about how long did you work there? Um, three and a half years. Okay. And what were your responsibilities? Um, I was a server. Okay. And did you know um, Heather Ellis while you worked there? Yes, ma'am. And how did you know her? Through work. Okay. And um, did she, was she somebody that had worked there for some time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was she one that worked basically every day? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, do you know the defendant? Yes, ma'am. And how do you know him? Through work. Okay. And what did he do until he killed? Maintenance. Okay. Now, um, to your knowledge, did the victim in this case, Heather Elvis, know Sydney? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if you don't mind, tell the jury a little bit about that. They were involved in a sexual relationship. Okay. And um, during that time, did he ever come see her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, would he come see her when he was not working? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Were there any other guys coming to see her? No, ma'am. Okay. And at that time, when you and her both worked there, were y'all friends? Yes, ma'am. And did y'all talk about, you know, what's going on in your life, that kind of stuff? All the time. Okay. And did she talk to you at that time about any other guy? No, ma'am. Okay. And was she seeing any other guy? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, at some point, did that relationship between Heather and this defendant, did it end? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if you don't mind telling this jury about what went on when that relationship ended. Um, she got a lot of nasty text messages and became very fearful, I would say. She just wasn't Heather. She was normally a bubbly, outgoing person, and she became the complete opposite. And had you ever seen her like that before? No, ma'am. Um, did you see any of the messages or any pictures on her phone that was being sent to her during that time frame? Yes, ma'am. And what did you see? I saw a sexual picture of Sydney smiling in between his wife's legs. And uh, did you see his face in the picture? Yes. The only thing I really remember about the picture is his smile. And that was sent to her during the time that relationship had ended? Yes, ma'am. Now, during the time that this relationship was going on between the victim and the defendant, did you notice any physical changes in her? Ma'am? As far as appearance, um, did you see any changes? I mean, she had mentioned that she was gaining a little bit of weight and could fit into her jeans, and that she had gone up a few bra sizes. And what did you think was going on? Well, I questioned her and asked her if she was pregnant. And do you know if she ever took a pregnancy test? I heard of the pregnancy test. I never saw it. Now, during the time that 
compared to the time um, that you knew her after this relationship ended, did she ever go back to being her own self? Closer towards December, I would say she kind of dropped the whole situation and was talking about getting her stuff to go back to hair school and she was getting a new job and she was, you know, seeing other people. As time moved on, she continued to work at the Kilby Yes, ma'am. And as time moved on, she kind of got more and more back to her own self. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, did, did the defendant continue to work at Kilby Kill? No, ma'am. When was the last time Oh, December 10th at our Christmas party. And have you seen or talked to her since then? No, ma'am. Okay. Was she scheduled to come into work since then? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did she come into work? No, ma'am. And how do you know that? I sat and waited to see if she would show up to work, and when she didn't show up, I kind of knew something was wrong. And was she somebody that just wouldn't show up to work? No. And when she didn't show up, what did you think? Something was wrong because Heather was always at work or 30 minutes early at that. Now, during the time you were friends with Heather, um, was she somebody that would just not have contact with people or leave and not show up for work? No. Okay. And how about with her phone? What was her habits with her phone? It was a lifeline. And did you ever see her car? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever see the inside of it? Yes, ma'am. How did it look? Like a normal girl's car, you throw everything in the back seat. So basically <laughs> everything in there? Yes. Now, when the defendant worked at Tilted Kill, did you ever see what kind of truck he drove? Um, all I know of is a white truck with the logo on the side. Okay. So the last time you saw him before he stopped working at Tilted Kill, he drove a white truck? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever see him in a black truck? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, earlier, um, Mr. Treslow, the defense attorney in this case, brought up a guy named Jeremy. Do you know him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now did him and Heather ever date? Yes, ma'am. And when was that? Um, I want to say around the beginning of when she started working at Tilted Kill. That's actually how we became friends. Okay. Is we had that mutual person. Okay. Now, when she was in a relationship with the defendant, was that relationship with that Jeremy guy already over? Yes. Okay. Not over. And was he dating somebody else as well? Jeremy? Yes. I'm not completely sure. Okay. And were they continuing to have contact when she was in a relationship with the defendant? Not that I was aware of. Okay. So that relationship had ended and she had moved on and he had moved on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did she talk about any, did he even talk about any other guys when she was dating the defendant? No, ma'am. During this time frame of um, when they were, when her and the defendant were dating up until December, um, do you know of anybody else she was involved in a relationship with? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you know anybody else that she was fearful of at that time? Tammy. Objection to the form of the question on stage. I'll rephrase your honor. Okay. Was there ever a time after this breakup that she appeared fearful? Yes, ma'am. And when was that? When she was receiving the phone calls from Tammy. Okay. And once she moved on from that, was she involved in any kind of relationship with anybody else? No, ma'am. Okay. And was anybody else calling the tilt to kill threatening her? No, ma'am. Did you see any other pictures on her phone of anything other than the one 
that that defendant had sent her. No, ma'am. Now, during the time she worked at Tilted Kill, did she ever come in with any bruises or knots or bangs? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if you don't mind, I know it's been two years ago, but around what time frame as far as um, when she was dating the defendant before then or after then that she showed up with these bruises? After. Okay. And had she ever showed up to work before with any bruises or bumps? No, ma'am. And before all this took place, did she ever appear fearful or paranoid or worried about anything? No. No further questions for this witness, Sharon. Cross-examination. Ms. Bonford, um, <coughs> have you had meetings with prosecutors prior to trial? Yes, sir. When was that? Week or so ago. Okay. And at that meeting, did you go through what your testimony was going to be here today? Sir. Did you go through what your testimony was going to be here today? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <coughs> Because it's it, one of the other ladies, I'm not sure which one, who's testified this morning, and I'll give you the names if, if you need them, but you work at Lincoln Park. One of the other ladies works there too? Yes, sir. Which one is that? Jessica. Yes, Jessica Cook. Yes. So you work with her now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you know Heather Elvis's Elvis parents? Yes. What kind of contact <laughs> have you had with them? within the last six months? No contact besides prayer vigils. Okay. So do you see them at the prayer vigils? Yes. Um, have you been to most of the prayer vigils over the years? Some. Okay. When's the last one you went to? Four or five months ago. Okay. You didn't go to the last one? No, sir. Okay. Um, your statement in the case that um, you stated that Heather initiated this relationship, stated that first time she saw him, she said, I wanted to jump his bones. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and then you, I think you already testified that um, she had been getting threatened one morning with, with 95 calls, as, as it was put, from a Tammy. Yes, sir. Is that sir. correct? And, um, and not Sydney, but Tammy. Well, it was listed as crazy bitch. Okay. Go ahead. So we're assuming, I mean, it, you, you, in other words, crazy bitch would be a name that somebody could associate in their phone with somebody. Yes, sir. So when that person called, it would show up crazy bitch. Yes, sir. You're testifying you understood crazy bitch to be Tammy, Sidney's wife. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you first asked, you were sure she was not seeing anybody at this time. And uh, your statement says that you did have knowledge that Heather dated Jeremy, Jeremy Spencer on and off and even lived with him for a short period of time. Yes, sir. Right. Previous to. Okay. How previous? Um, I would say her relationship with him ended in about January. Okay. And you feel comfortable to say that you know for a fact that during October, November, December that Heather had no contact with Jeremy? Yes. How do you know that? Because it was cut off. She never spoke about him. Right. It was I never know that she spoke about him. Do you know for a fact whether she had contact with him? I do not know for a fact, no. Okay. Because we know that Heather was having contact in a relationship with a married man, which is kind of secretive, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's very possible that Heather could have, from time to time, talked with, texted with, or met with Jeremy during that time, and you would not know about it. Yes. And would it surprise you to learn that, in fact, uh, if, would you be surprised, in fact, you learned throughout this trial that she did, in fact, run into Jeremy during that time period? I would be surprised. Okay. Do you know Bree Warman? Yes. Okay. If, based upon your relationship with Bree, if you learned from her that she, with Heather, ran into uh, Jeremy, would you believe Bree? Yes. She wouldn't make that up, would she? No. Okay. Uh, 
in terms of that picture, that was also sent by the wife, correct? Your understanding? From my understanding. And oral sex uh, sitting more between the wife's legs. And I guess the assumption is that's the wife. Yes. Right. Um, you said that the day that she didn't show up for work, that you that you basically were sitting waiting on her and you knew that something was wrong, correct? Yes, sir. Are there any other the, the, the ladies that you work with that you sit and wait to see if they come in on time? To, no, sir. And get worried about. It? it was just her. Yes, sir. Okay. Was that because of the wife threats or just her in general? Well, it was because of us realizing that she was missing. When, well, when did you realize it? When we got a phone call looking for her. So you got a phone call looking for her before she was supposed to be at work? A prior shift. Okay. <clears throat> and then you said that, uh, that, uh, that, I'm sorry, Heather Ellis had no relationships after that with anyone? No, sir. And again, I would ask you, to your knowledge, that's correct. Yes, sir. She could have, and you may not know about it, correct? She could have. In fact, the night that she went missing, she was on a date with a different person, correct? Yes, sir. So she was seeing somebody else during that time period. Yes, sir. And the black eye was after the breakup with City Moore? Yes, sir. And when your statement indicated that she told you she was jumped and had to pull out a knife to defend herself. Yes, sir. Where did she tell you that? At work? Yes, sir. Um, did you encourage her to, to report that to the police? Did she tell you she stabbed somebody? Had yes, sir. Had to stab somebody, huh? Yes, sir. Did she ever tell you who she stabbed? No, sir. Do you ever, did you have any knowledge whatsoever or evidence, anything that would lead you to believe that Dennis Hart had a fondness for it? No, yeah. sir. Huh? No, sir. So if there were text messages between the two of them that were romantic in nature, you'd be very surprised? Yes. Okay. What did you mean that when you in your statement when you say that Heather told you she felt like the outcast in her family? She felt like an outcast. I mean, in, in what respect? She just said, I felt like an outcast, or did she explain that? The rebel without a cause. And how, how do you take that to mean? I mean, I, I know that saying and what it means, but you want to expound on that at all, about being a rebel without a cause? I mean, how would you explain Heather as a rebel without a cause? Your Honor, I'm not. Is he asking her what? What's with that? I, she, I'm sorry, I guess I'm confused. But well, witnesses can ask the question. If she doesn't understand, she can ask the question. So he, I don't understand. Overrule. <clears throat> what meaning did you give that, if any, in her referring to herself as a rebel without a cause? A typical teenage girl. Okay. Well, she was 20. Yeah. Okay. So, and. You think a typical teenage girl is an outcast in her family? Not necessarily an outcast, but... Okay. Um, would you describe her sister as an outcast in the family or a rebel without a cause, Morgan? No, sir. Okay. Um, you also said in your statement that Heather told you that she had frequently been to Peachtree Landing with her sister, Morgan. She had mentioned that a few times, yes. Okay. I don't have anything problem. Okay, read the rest, please. Just a couple, Your Honor. Sure. Megan, if you don't mind, what am I showing you? The statement. 
Okay. And who wrote it? Myself. And if you don't mind, show this jury how many pages it is. Four. Okay. And if you don't mind, tell this jury when you wrote that statement. February 5th, 2014. February 5th of 2014. Yes, sir. Okay. And have you seen that statement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is anything you told this jury today different than what you wrote in that statement in February of 2014? No, ma'am. Okay. And had you ever met with me or anybody else from the solicitor's office or police department before you wrote that statement? No, ma'am. Okay. And what's in that statement is what you're telling us here today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Press, I'll ask you some questions about um, what Heather said about an altercation that had taken place during the time her and the defendant broke up. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why was she telling that? I believe it was because she was getting a lot of conflict with other girls saying that she was getting what she deserved by sleeping with a married man. And what was this conflict about from the other girls? Just a lot of them causing her drama. I mean, somebody wrote on one of the blackboards to stay away from the maintenance man. He's married. And she was a little upset over it. Okay. And so the majority of the girls were giving her a hard time because he was married? Yes, ma'am. Good for the question, John. Recross. What, what was it that was written on the blackboard? To stay away from or stop fucking the maintenance man he's married. And you have a quote in your statements, hey ladies, please stop the maintenance man he's married. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what you wrote. Hey ladies, please stop. Okay, and that was written on the blackboard at Heather's work. Yes by either a supervisor or a co-worker or somebody that she worked with. Yes, sir. Thank you. You may come down. You wish this witness to be excused, Lister. No further questions, John. Right. You wish the witness to be excused? Yes, please. Right. You're free to leave, too. Let's give him time. We'll go ahead. You said the next witness may be 30 to 40 minutes. I believe so, Your Honor. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm going to let you go for the night. One of the things I'd like you to do tomorrow I'd like for you to be back at 9.30. Um, and I'd like for you to talk among yourselves. Uh, I'm, one thing we all have placed, and you do, everybody that works here has uh, needs outside of this courthouse. But I'm willing to work a little longer. Typically, we work at 5 or 5.30. But if you're willing to work a little longer to keep this case moving, I'm willing to do that. But I really prefer to you uh, as to how we what length of time you're willing to do if you all decide you won't stop judge between 5 and 5.30. To the extent I can honor that, I'll do it. Sometimes it depends on the witnesses. If we're at a point where we need to finish a witness, we try to do that. Sometimes, it, just like today, if I know have an idea that the witness may be 30 to 45 minutes, I'm not going to generally start that, although we have a, few, a little bit of time left rather than to, to do that. But if you'll give me some framework, I would be very, it would be helpful to me in planning, and I thank you. Please remember that you're not at liberty, of course, to talk among yourselves or talk outside of the courtroom with anyone. Again, you don't conduct any independent research. And when you go home tonight, if there's somebody there, I would imagine the first question is going to be, what are you doing? What's this case about? That would be pretty normal. Tell them you can't talk about it, because if you did, you will have commenced your individual deliberations by discussing the case. So you would violate your oath. And so I would ask you, please, not you can talk about it when you finish, if you wish, and that will be up to you. Uh, also, I would remind you, please, if, if you watch the news and you see something coming on about the Moore trial, turn it off. Because uh, I'm going to ask you each morning, tomorrow morning, I'm going to ask you to take a note that you have honored the court's uh, instruction by not talking about this among yourselves, not viewing any newscasts about it, or allowing anybody to talk to you about it. And so 
that only is very significant, as you know. So thank you very much for your attention, for your patience today. Hope you have a good evening. I'll see you at 9.30 in the morning. Thank you. Come directly to your jury room also. And you don't need to call any number. I've had jurors that called the number and said, it didn't, said I didn't need to report. And uh, you don't need to do that. You come directly. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Thank you. you have a time. 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 You have a time.